This section deals with dividends on preferred stock. Dividends on preferred stock is paid before the dividends for common stockholders. Dividends are typically stated as a percentage of par value or a dollar amount per share. Preferred stock could be cumulative. It could be the cumulative or non-cumulative. What we mean by cumulative is that if the board of directors do not pay a dividend to the preferred stockholders in a particular year, they get collected until the year in which they are paid. So let's say for example that there was preferred stock on the balance sheet of a company and they decided to pass up on paying dividends for two years. Well, if they pay a dividend on the third year, they have to pay the preferred stockholders three years worth of dividends, the two years that they passed up plus the year that they declared the dividend. If that is the case, the preferred stock is said to be cumulative preferred stock. The dividends are said to be paid in arrears. How do you distinguish whether preferred stock is cumulative or non-cumulative? If they are non-cumulative, the wording on the stock will say non-cumulative preferred stock. If it does not say non-cumulative, you assume that the stock is cumulative and whenever they do pay dividends, you have to make sure that any dividends that are in arrears need to be paid before the common stockholders are paid their dividend. Let's take a look at an example. It says the balance sheet of Trendline Corp reported the following at December 31st, 2012. The company has no transactions that produce other comprehensive income or loss. You don't need to worry about other comprehensive income or loss because we will not cover those in this class. So stockholders equity has preferred stock, common stock, paid in capital in excess of par, uh, retained earnings and treasury stock and your total stockholders equity is $976,000. $500. The question is, is the preferred stock cumulative or non-cumulative? And how can you tell? Well, let's go look at the preferred stock. It says preferred stock, 4%, which is the rate of the dividends, $10 par, 10,000 shares authorized and issued. So they've got 10,000 shares authorized and they've issued the entire 10,000 shares. Redemption value of 110,000, you don't need to worry about that. And the par value has been credited to your preferred stock account, so you see $100,000 worth of preferred stock there. The question is, is the preferred stock cumulative or non-cumulative? So we looked at the description of preferred stock and nowhere does it say the word non-cumulative. Therefore, we assume that this stock is cumulative. We say that this is cumulative stock as it does not say that it is non-cumulative. Using the same information, part B says, what is the total amount of the annual preferred dividend? So how much would be the amount of dividends for the preferred stockholders? We said that 4% was the rate of the dividend. 4% of what? 4% of the par value of the preferred stock. So the preferred dividend is equal to $100,000 times 4%, which is the same as 0 0.04, which will give you $4,000 as a preferred dividend. Now remember again that this $4,000 will only be paid if the board of directors declare the dividend. Sometimes they can pass the dividend and since these are cumulative, the past dividends will be have to be paid in arrears someday. Same information, part C says how many shares of common stock are outstanding. If you remember when we were going through the def definitions, I said that the number of shares outstanding is equal to the number of shares in the hands of the shareholders. So how do we figure out how many shares are in the hands of the shareholders? we know that this particular company has issued a certain amount of common stock. How much have they issued? We can see that they've issued 50,000 shares of common stock. The next thing we need to see is whether we have purchased any treasury stock. If we have, 
those 50,000 shares that we issued are all not in the hands of the shareholders. We do have some treasury stock. We have 1,000 shares of treasury stock, which means we have to subtract that amount of treasury stocks from our issued stock, which gives us 49,000 shares of outstanding stock. We have 49,000 shares remaining in the hands of the shareholders. Let's look at the fourth part of this. It says, Trendline has not paid a dividend to its preferred stockholders for the last three years. If the board of directors declares a dividend in 2012 of $50,000, how much of the dividend would be paid to the preferred stockholders and how much of the dividend would be paid to the common stockholders? We know that these are cumulative preferred stock because the word non-cumulative is not there in the description. We also know that the preferred stock dividend is $4,000 per year because we had calculated it earlier in requirement B. Now the question is, now that they're paying a dividend in 2012, how much would we have to pay the preferred stockholders? Remember, the preferred stockholders get paid their dividend before the common stockholders do, so let's calculate how much they will get paid. We know that they had dividends in arrears. They had dividends in arrears of three years, so we have to pay them three years in arrears, and the dividend per year is $4,000, so we have to pay a total of $12,000 in arrears. Now, for 2012, they're also owed a dividend of $4,000. So we had to pay the three years in arrears plus the dividends of 2012, which is 4,000, giving a total dividend payable to preferred stockholders of $16,000. I know you can't see that real well with the, um, with the logo there, but $12,000 plus 4,000 is $16,000 for total preferred dividend. Now let's see how much of a dividend would the common stockholders receive. The total dividend is $50,000. So whatever is remaining is paid to the common stockholders. $50,000 minus the 16000 that we paid to the preferred stockholders, that will give you $34,000 as a dividend for the common stockholders.